So this is the first time I'm wearing this shirt and this shirt was an obscene amount of money and I kind of look like a pirate. I'm into it. Hello everyone, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel Mooney Reads where I talk about books and things. And today I have a very anticipated video for me, a video that I've been wanting to film for a really long time but I really just haven't gotten around to it. I thought that I hadn't read all of my five stars predictions and I thought I would update you on what those were and also give you my new five star predictions where maybe I will do a vlog where I just read my five stars prediction books. These are only the ones in my physical TBR. I have some in my Kindle, I have some in my um, uh, Audible library and also my script library but I wanted to keep it to physical books. So let's start with the books that I said I thought would be five stars and what I actually rated them. And I'm actually surprised though I can't find one of the books. I'll insert right now, it's the yellow wallpaper. I don't remember the author, I'm so bad at this. But anyway, I did give that, that particular short story I gave it five stars. So I was right on the money with that one. It's the story of a woman slowly being driven insane by her husband basically and I just thought it was really well written and I loved it. It was like watching an episode of Bly Manor or The Haunting of Hill House. It was so good. I really recommend it and I don't have much to say about it because it's like 10 pages long and I don't want to spoil it but basically this woman gets sent to the country because there they say that she will get better from the illness that's been like haunting her she's very I, I would say depressed and then her she keeps seeing things and her she tries to tell her husband and her husband's like bye you're not seeing anything so yeah it was really really good <laughs> I did a really bad job of explaining it but I assure you that it was really good and I assure you that I have that book somewhere it's so tiny that I don't know where in my books I put it I thought I had put it down here with all of my like more haunting stories but I just can't find it. Let's talk about the one that really didn't hit the mark and that is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. Now I don't have anything about against Kristen Hanna or anything like that but I actually DNF this book. Um, I just I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. It was too much for me. It was really too much for me. This is the story about two women um, in World War II. One decides to go fight Nazis and the other one decides not to. And it's about them and their story. And I have a sister, they're sisters. And it was just a little bit too much for something that I was going through at the moment. So this was actually a DNF. I might pick it up at some time, but I don't know if I want to hurt myself like that. Like, I like books that make you cry and that make you think and all that jazz, but at the same time, it's like, I do I want to put myself through that? I'm not sure. So for now, this is the one DNF that I have in my 5 stars prediction original video, which I will link up here if you want to watch. So there you go. I DNF'd. I DNF'd The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. I don't know. I'm still keeping it though because I might pick it up later. Let's get on with the ones that weren't five stars. And the next one is uh, The Mistborn, the first book. Um, what is it called? I always forget. The Final Empire. So I have actually the original book that I pulled up on that uh, video. And originally I gave this book four stars, but then I bumped it down to three and then I bumped it down to two. So really, I was really off the mark with this one. I really wanted to like Brandon Sanderson. I do like his Star, Star, Skyward, Skyward trilogy, I believe it's going to be. I do like his more science fiction stuff, but again, this is a high fantasy novel and I don't know what possessed me to thinking that I would like a high fantasy novel enough to give it five stars, but I really didn't like this and I ranted about this recently. I will link it up here, but it just has a lot of the tropes that I don't like, like, you know, the one girl in a group of friends because obviously I don't, there's no women in this book except women that are there to further or hinder the romance in the book so it's just really annoying and it's boring and i just couldn't get into it so i am keeping this copy though you know just to have it in my shelves just in case because everybody whenever they come to my house which isn't often because you know lockdown but when they come to my house they're like have you read brandon sanders and i'm like yeah right there look i read it didn't like it there you go and then we get to the happy happy part where i tell you that well four out of the Four out of the how many? Six? Was it six? Yes, I actually picked six. Four out of the six books 
that I thought would be five stars ended up being five stars. And let's start off with My Cousin Rachel. Oh my gosh, do I love this book. And I love the movie too. I did a book to movie adaptation project on this. I will link it up here. This book is about a young man who was whose parents died and he was raised by his cousin. And his cousin starts having issues. So whenever they, they live in Scotland in a really, well, every, it's Scotland all cold, I don't know. But they live in a really cold part of Scotland. And um, he, uh, the cousin, goes to Italy to spend the winters because it's just bad for him and his health to stay in Scotland. And there he meets Rachel, a, a very beautiful woman whom he marries. But then before they get back, he dies. And the main character in this book, in this book, who's called what is his what is his name? Philip. Philip is convinced Rachel did it. And in true Daphne du Maurier fashion, you don't know whether she did it, she didn't do it, did she? It sounds like she did, but then it sounds like it, she didn't. It sounds like it might be something congenital. It's so, so, so good. I really love this book. And the film adaptation was incredible too. I really recommend that everybody read this book. It's really good. Um, it's my second favorite Daphne du Maurier book after Rebecca, and I gave it five out of five stars. Next up, we have A Dark Horse in the race because I haven't seen anybody talk about this man, this author, <laughs> this man, <laughs> this author um, in, the, in, the, in the community and that is um, Marcus Sedgwick. I guess there must have been a time when people talked about him because I know one of his other books is more famous but this one is The Monsters We Deserve by Marcus Sedgwick. I bought this. This was a complete impulse buy. I don't know if you can see the beautiful cover. And I read the back and I was like, that's for me. And I thought this was gonna be five stars. And it did end up being five stars. I absolutely loved the story. I loved the way that it was told. I loved everything about it. There was not a single thing about this book that I didn't like. Um, I love that he hates Frankenstein <laughs> because I hate Frankenstein. We've been over this. That's like my least favorite book of all time. No, that's not true. Blindness beat that book. I mean, at least nobody sexually violent, violates a woman to death in Frankenstein. So yeah, Blindness is my least favorite book, but I really don't like Frankenstein and um, the author of this book and the author in the book doesn't like Frankenstein. And it's just a really amazing to the force of what it is like to write a book and to give so much of yourself to someone else. And it talks a lot about Mary Shelley and it's just, it's amazing. And, and it's a really quick read because if you see, like, I don't know if you can see, but there's a lot of illustrations, blank pages. It's like, it reads like a dream, like a fever dream. And I recommend that you pick this up. I gave it five out of five stars. And the last book in that um, video that I gave five out of five stars to is The Doll Maker of Krakow by R.M. Romero. This is the story, this is another World War II story. This is about a doll maker in Krakow who, um, well, he makes dolls. And one of these dolls comes to life. And it turns out that dolls can come to life and it's the story of them trying to save children from concentration camps. The end of this book is really jarring, really horrible, really hard to read, but overall, the overall book is so beautiful that I just, I had to give it five stars. If you see, I annotated it. It's, it's one of my favorite books that I read last year and I whenever I see it on my shelves I just smile because it's there and I really like it. So that's it. Out of the six books that I thought that I would give five stars to, there was one DNF, there was one two stars, and then there were four five stars. I think I did pretty well. Now let's get into the books that I, now let's get into the books that I think I will give five stars to this time around. I'll be honest, I had a really hard time figuring out which books to add on here because I just I pared down my TBR so much that right now I don't have a lot of books that I haven't read. Like I would say like 90% of this is read, 90% of this is read. So I couldn't find a lot of physical books, but I did find some and they're sitting right here and they're not gonna fall very good. All right, I'm just gonna pick them up in the order that I have them in, they're right here. So the first one is Vita Nostra by Maria and Sergei Dianchenko. 
Um, this is a sort of weird, what's it called? Dark Academia, there we go. Dark Academia book written by, um, I believe they are a couple of Russian writers, I'm not sure. But this is Blurb by Lev Grossman. And if you know anything about me, you know that The Magicians by Lev Grossman is one of my favorite books series of all time. So I think that this one would be amazing. I mean, I, I'm so excited to read it and everybody keeps telling me to read it. So I really want to read it. That's it. That's all I have for you. Remember, I like to go into books as knowing as little as possible. And this is one of those books where I just want to know very very little the next two i have are actually non-fiction books i have erebus um the story of a ship now this i think i've talked about this so much this is the story of a ship that we lost for like 400 either 400 or 600 years and then we found it and then we're trying to trace back what happened to it and why was it lost where has it been and why we haven't been able to find this ship can you imagine that in this day and age, we lost the ship for 400 years. Like even if it's not 600, it's still 400 years. I'm really excited to read this one. I have it on audio and I prefer to read my books on audio if you don't know, but I do like to have some physical copies. So I have this one, really wanna read it. I think I'm gonna love it. The next one is one that I'm gonna have to read physically and that is What a Fish Knows, The Inner Lives of Our Underwater Cousins by Jonathan Balcombe. Now this book is all about fish and all about what we think we know about fish and what we really don't know about them. I hope this is more of an ethology book in case you don't know ethology is the study and behavior of animals because I really like knowing more about that than about like their, I don't know, like makeup or like their their the science behind fish how they swim what scales do like i really i'm not so interested in that but i do i but i do want to know more about fish themselves i think it really helps with my thalassophobia in case you don't know i suffer from thalassophobia which is extreme fear of fish in fact just looking at these pictures makes me kind of mm, feel my skin crawl but i am working on it and i just see like Part three is what a fish feels. And I wanna know that because I feel that the more I understand fish, the more I understand that they're just like my cats or a horse or a dog or something. And I don't see them as such alien creatures that leave, live underwater, then, you know, I will, my fear will be diminished a little bit. So that's why I'm excited to read this book. And again, it's about fish and feelings. I actually think fish are really sweet animals and I really want to know more about them. So this is the next five-star prediction read. That's it for the um, non-fiction. Now I have a few fiction books. The first one that I'm going to bring out is Ella Soe by Darcy Little Badger. Everybody has been saying this book is amazing. This is like a murder mystery book with um, magic thrown in, which is not usually my style, but I do like to read indigenous and first nation authors and darcy little badger is first nations and i think this is gonna be a fun fun read this is the only one that i don't have an audio or in um kindle in any way so i have to read it no not this one and this one i have to read both of these phys physically and usually I, that wouldn't be a problem but i've gone so used to written to reading in um audio format or in Kindle format that I wonder if that's gonna diminish my love for these books. We'll see, we'll see. And the last two books I have, I'm gonna bundle them together because they're both by Neil Gaiman. I have The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman, which I think is the story of a little boy whose family is murdered and he ends up in a cemetery and is raised by ghosts. What? That sounds amazing. I know for somebody that doesn't like fantasy, there's not a single science fiction book here. Um, that's that's interesting that's interesting although i do have a bunch of science fiction books but they're in my kindle but whatever we're talking about this book so yeah um this is the the story of a of a little boy that ends up being raised by ghosts like what's not to like about that and i love neil gaiman neil gaiman i think it's one of those authors where you either really love his writing or you really don't like his writing he he deals a lot with um fantabulism and some people just really don't like fantabulism i actually happen to really like it so i hope that i really enjoy this book and the other one is 
The Ocean at the End of the Lane by, by Neil Gaiman. I think this is more of his adult book. But yeah, I just really think that Neil Gaiman is up my alley. Ever since I read Neverwhere, I've been in love with his stories. Then I read Coraline and I was like blown away by how good it was. So this is my last five star prediction. So I have here five books that are my five star predictions. And maybe you'll get a vlog where I try to read them all. I don't know. I'm trying to do a little bit of a change in my content where I do more reading vlogs rather than sit down videos but reading vlogs more in the like the style of books and lala which this is i talked about this on twitter where i don't want to seem like i'm copying books and lala but her style of vlog is what i like where you don't show your whole life you just show what you're reading and uh, i think also literary science alliance does this angela from literary science alliance so i think that that's more or less what's going to be coming in the future i'm still going to be sitting down and doing sit down videos and book chats and stuff like that but i think that's going to be less and less and more um me just reading and telling you as i read because that also frees up my um what's it called wrap ups because when i'm really reading like i'm normally reading i'm reading 14 15 books a month and doing a wrap up for that is really draining on me and i think a lot of people don't even watch until the end because it's just like 50 minutes of me doing a wrap up but maybe if i do a vlog <laughs> maybe people will be more interested and maybe even i will be more interested to be talking about a book as i'm reading it because sometimes you've read something three weeks ago and you don't remember exactly how you felt so yeah Without any further ado, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for coming to my, my video. If you're new here, please like, subscribe. And if you're not new here, just like or leave me a black heart down below to let me know that you've watched this far. With that being said, I leave you with a friendly reminder that I post videos three times a week or at least I'm trying to and that I will see you all in another galaxy far, far away. And of course, that I appreciate each and every single one of you. Bye. You know what's the worst part about filming YouTube videos is putting your books back. I don't know how people do it. I don't know how people do it and don't like throw a tantrum because I want to throw a tantrum right now.